We've been creating videos for CVP for nearly three years now, and one of our most used and recommended lenses throughout the years has been the Sigma 18-35 f1.8, which since its release back in 2013 has become a huge hit within the videographer and cinematography market. But why? Well, let's take a look. When it was announced back in 2013, the 18-35 was a breakthrough due to it being the first standard zoom featuring an f1.8 aperture throughout its entire focal range. It was a massive release for Super 35 and APS-C shooters wanting a fast general purpose zoom, at a very reasonable price point of just £659. Arguably you are looking at one of the best bang for buck lenses on the market right here. The lens is built really well, feeling very solid in the hand with smooth focus and zoom rotations. Given it's a stills lens, it has an alright focus rotation of roughly 135 degrees and a good close focus of 28 centimeters. Physically, the lens weighs just 810 grams, features a 72 mm filter thread, and is roughly 121 mm in length. Which, given its complex 17 elements in 12 groups design, is relatively light and compact. When zooming, it also doesn't extend at all, which makes it fantastic for several different video and cine setups. Due to the extreme popularity of the 18-35 in the video and cine space, it's not surprising that the original lens has been rehoused a bunch of times by different companies. Though Sigma responded to this in 2016 with the introduction of their own cine versions of the 18-35 and the 50-100. These lenses are optically identical to their stills counterparts, just with really nice cine housing Sigma have put together for it. This housing is a league above most of the rehousings done before it, and if you need cine features for your workflow, these are great lenses. So the benefits the cine versions of these lenses have over their stills counterparts are improved build quality, consistent front diameters for clip-on matte boxes, fully manual iris zoom and focus, and a much longer focus rotation. But overall image quality will be pretty much identical, there's only a slight tweak in the coatings according to Sigma. We've had an 18-35 to in our kit for years now and have shot so many projects on it. The lens gives a really nice clean image and this is both a pro and a con. A pro for people who want this look and a con for people who want a bit more character to their lens. However, you can always degrade the image a lens produces, whereas you can't do it the other way around. So if you do want to kind of funk this lens up a bit, just grab some filters. Here are a few shots that we've grabbed over the years with the 18-35. to Anyway, let's look at some control tests and explore what makes this lens so great, starting with our coverage tests. Coverage is something that people ask about a decent amount with the 18-35, to and luckily we have the Cine version on our lens coverage tool, which actually has the same coverage as the stills lens. For these examples, I wanted to show the lens being used on the NFX6, which is the blue frame line, and a C300 Mark III, which is the yellow frame line within it. At 18mm, you can clearly see that the lens doesn't cover anywhere near what is needed for the FX6, but it covers the C300 easily with a slight bit of vignetting. At infinity, vignette is reduced slightly, and when you stop down to T4, you can see coverage hasn't improved much, but light drop-off has. At 22mm, at close focus, you can see the lens almost covers the FX6 format, but it still has a slight bit of vignette towards the corners of the C300 frame. At infinity, coverage looks worse with more hard cutoff but improved vignetting for the C300 frame. Unsurprisingly, as you stop down, vignetting is improved, but coverage is a little bit worse. At 27mm, I would say coverage is now acceptable for full frame camera use. This will depend on the format you're wanting to shoot though, so make sure you check. 
Wide open, the FX6 would have some heavy vignetting at both close focus and infinity. At T4, this is massively improved though. Coverage and overall vignette performance is improved again at 35mm with much less vignetting with fairly even light illumination across the frame at T4. I also wanted to have a look and see how this lens covers the Komodo. So these examples are with the Komodo in its 6K 17x9 mode and it covers really well with only a little bit of hard vignetting at its wider end. So for people wanting to use it with Komodo, I think this covers really well. But like I said, this is available on our lens tool, so if you want to see if it covers a certain format you want to use it with, head over to it via the link in the description below. The lens features a nine-bladed iris, which you can see forming the shape of the bokeh throughout the f-stop range as you stop down. Throughout its zoom range, the bokeh also has a bit of texture to it, and it also has a defined edge to it as well. Wide open, you can see a slight bit of green fringe to it throughout the zoom range, but as you step down, this does improve. Wide open, the lens also looks to have cat's eye shaped bokeh and suffer from some distortion towards the corner of the frame. However, as you stop down, you can see the aperture blades forming the shape more and more, and this distortion is reduced. The 18 35 handles flare well with a consistent looking flare throughout its zoom range. These example shots were captured on our Red Gemini set to 5500 Kelvin using a Daedalite DLD7 set to 3200 Kelvin. The flare is quite nice and doesn't look to lower contrast massively. When it comes to cinematography, flares are pretty subjective and different sources will yield slightly different looks to this image, but whether you like this or not will be personal preference. When it comes to distortion, the 18 35 does show some barrel distortion at its wider focal length, which then turns towards pincushion at the more telly end of the lens. This is pretty common performance for a lens at this kind of price point, but at 18 millimeters, performance is better than I have seen with other unique zoom options. Unfortunately, the 18-35 does suffer from some breathing. These tests here are shot at f5.6, and as you can see from these examples, you can see breathing throughout the entire focal range. It looks best at around 28mm, but it still is rather pronounced. This performance isn't great, but it's certainly usable, and is definitely not as bad as the 50-100. For those that aren't aware, how path focal a lens is, is how well a zoom holds its focus throughout its focal range. For this test, we zoomed into 35, focused, and then zoomed out. The 18-35 performs incredibly well. It holds focus decently throughout its range, which is awesome considering its price point. For these chart tests, we shot on our Red Gemini in 5K HD mode, so this will explain some of the funky performance in the corners towards the wider end of the lens. Throughout the focal ranges we tested, the lens renders well in the center of frame, and as you stop down, this is improved, but only slightly. Towards the edges of frame, you can see a resolution drop off. However, it does bite back up at around f2.8. From that point onwards, the performance is similar down to 5.6. Considering the lens's weight, size, focal length, range, and aperture, this performance is incredibly impressive. When it comes to chromatic aberration, the lens does suffer from some wide open, but given its size, weight, and aperture, this isn't surprising. Wide open, you can see green or cyan CA past the point of focus, and purple or red CA in front of the point of focus. This is evident throughout the entire focal range. At each of the focal lengths we tested, as you stop down, this CA performance improves, which again isn't surprising. So, in conclusion, there's a reason why the Sigma 18-35 has been one of the most popular lenses over the past few years. It offers a great focal range, a clean, neutral image with good CA performance, and it is very well priced. It is an easy recommendation for anyone with an APS-C or Super 35 camera wanting a great all-purpose wide-angle zoom. And with cameras like the Canon C70 or C300 Mark III and Red Komodo coming out last year, these formats aren't going anywhere soon. Let us know what you think of the Sigma 18-35 down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please make sure to give it a like and possibly consider subscribing. It really does help us out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.